let's talk about neonatal sepsis. Neonatal sepsis is the presence of microorganisms in the blood or tissue of the newborn during the first month of life. It can be classified as early onset or late onset. Early onset neonatal sepsis is an infection occurring in the newborn within the first 72 hours of life. Early onset infections are likely to be caused by an infection passed to the newborn from the mother's genital urinary system. Then there is late onset. These are infections that are acquired at least 72 hours after life. Late onset infections are transferred to the newborn mostly through healthcare staff, family members, caregivers, or through environmental exposure. Many factors put the newborn at risk for neonatal sepsis, such as prolonged rupture of membranes, preterm labor, preterm birth, prolonged or difficult labor, maternal fever, maternal infections, GBS, UTIs, low birth weight, meconium staining, birth asphyxia, invasive procedures, or improper hand washing by healthcare staff or family members. Let's go over the signs and symptoms that the nurse may see in the newborn with neonatal sepsis. Common signs of sepsis in the newborn include temperature instability, hypotension, tachycardia, pale skin, central cyanosis, hypotonia, poor weight gain, poor feeding, irritability, persistent crying. The newborn may also develop a rash, gastrointestinal problems, seizures, jaundice, hypoglycemia, decreased oxygen saturation. The newborn may have drainage from the eyes or umbilical stump, lethargy or listlessness. The newborn may also display signs of respiratory distress syndrome. The biggest challenge neonatal sepsis poses to the nurse is that the symptoms are usually subtle or vague, but these newborns can deteriorate rapidly. So if the nurse sees any of these signs, they should notify the pediatrician right away. Because the clinical manifestations of neonatal sepsis could easily be confused with another condition, the presence of infection should be verified with a CBC, C-reactive protein, as well as blood, urine, or CSF cultures. The presence of infection could also be verified with x-rays of the chest or abdomen, which may reveal infectious microorganisms. Let's go over some interventions for the care of the newborn with neonatal sepsis. Neonatal sepsis is medically treated with antibiotic therapy. Vasopressors may also be administered to increase blood pressure, urine output, and tissue perfusion if the newborn begins to experience septic shock or cardiac failure. Dopamine is usually the vasopressor of choice. Interventions of the nurse caring for the newborn with sepsis may include monitoring vital signs, especially temperature. This is because these babies are at risk for hypothermia, which could lead to cold stress. To prevent cold stress, we want to maintain a thermal environment. This can be done by encouraging skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother or by placing the newborn in a radiant warmer. When obtaining vital signs, we also want to be on the lookout for low blood pressure and increased heart rate, which are signs of impending septic shock. And remember we said that neonatal sepsis could cause respiratory distress syndrome. So we want to assess the newborn's lung sounds, oxygen saturation, provide supplemental oxygen as needed, and monitor their ABGs. Because remember, Poor gas exchange could lead to respiratory acidosis. As we stated earlier, the newborn with sepsis is at risk for hypoglycemia. This is because a condition such as sepsis increases the newborn's energy requirements. For this reason, we should frequently monitor the newborn's glucose levels and provide nutritional support. Babies with neonatal sepsis are at an increased risk for dehydration. Because of this, the nurse should monitor the baby's specific gravity, urine output, and daily weight to monitor their hydration status. You should also monitor for little to no urine output, which is a sign of renal compromise. Neonatal sepsis can be devastating for the newborn's family, putting them at risk for situational low self-esteem. Be sure to provide emotional support to the family and encourage them to express their feelings and concerns. Most of all, the best intervention for neonatal sepsis is prevention. With frequent hand hygiene, educating the newborn's family, 
minimizing risks in the prenatal and postpartum stages, as well as early identification of newborns that are at risk. All right, everyone, that brings this video to an end. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be sure to check out nursingtonurture.com for promo codes, merch, as well as more educational content. Remember to never give up and as always, thanks for watching.